so now after studying rutherford's model of atom now we will be coming to bohr's model of the hydrogen atom now there are certain limitations regarding the explanation of rutherford for example it is said that this is say suppose nucleus and this is electrons now because of a force the electrons rotates now if a force is applied in this electron so it will be accelerated this charged particles will be accelerated this is accelerated now it was in a electro magnetic radiation we know that if the charged particles are accelerated it emits certain electromagnetic wave now this was before the discovery so the understanding was say suppose if this charged particle is actually accelerated then it should emit some force or say some radiation not force some radiation and it will continuously lose its energy and after some time it will collapse in the nucleus but this is not happening so the question mark is why is this not happening if we go according to the rutherford's model so then bohr proposed his own model with some postulates and the first postulate of bohr's model was the first postulate that we know is that an electron in an atom could revolve in a certain stable orbits without the emission of radiant energy so the electrons it rotates around stable orbits without the release of energy so this was the first postulate that bohr had proposed now if you look at this particular postulate what we can assume is that if you each atom has a certain definite stable states now if you look the if the orbits are stable then this orbits will also have certain stable energy in them and they are called stationary states of the atoms so if they are stationary or orbits so at a particular orbit the electron will have a particular energy and that energy will be the energy at that particular stationary state now let's move on to our second postulate now the second postulate actually talks about the first postulate and it gives us the energy of the fixed orbit this gives us the energy of the fixed orbit and bohr's second postulate tells us that the electron can revolve around the nucleus only in those orbits electron can revolve around the nucleus only on those orbits where the angular momentum the angular momentum angular momentum is some integral multiple of angular momentum is some integral integral multiple of integral multiple of h upon twice pi this was bohr's second postulate and therefore the angular momentum say suppose the angular momentum angular momentum l l was given as n into h upon twice pi where n is the number of orbit so this was bohr's second postulate now let's look at bohr's third postulate so we come to bohr's third postulate now bohr's third postulate is actually what has been proved by einstein and 
also has been proved by Planck separately. So Bohr's third postulate was when an electron transfers from one state to another that is from one orbit so instead of state you can say from one from one higher orbit higher orbit to lower to lower because from higher to further higher it will require energy but it will not release energy so electron transfer from one higher orbit to lower there is a release of energy there is a release release of energy and that energy is actually equal to energy h nu is actually equal to e final minus e initial and this is we know a photon a photon is released is released this is the concept of photon so energy can be termed as a release of photon now if you look over here if you look at now bohr's second postulate bohr's second postulate of quantization it says that the orbits are the energy of the orbits are quantized so we know for ln we had already discussed for angular momentum ln was actually given by m v n into r n that is velocity at n nth orbit and the radius of the nth orbit now which is actually equal to n h upon twice pi therefore where n is the nth orbit h is the Planck's constant this is Planck Planck's constant nh upon twice pi now this pi is also constant so now if you look at the relation if you look at the relation we have v n is actually equal to e equals to the velocity at the nth orbit is actually equal to e upon root over of 4 pi epsilon naught into n into r to the power n and further if you combine these two equations then vn is actually given by 1 by n e square upon now this was something that we had previously proved 4 by 4 pi epsilon naught into 1 upon h upon twice pi so this is what we have the value of vn so now the radius if you look at the radius rn you will be given n square upon m now just put all the values just put all the values here and there you will get the result now vn this value is taken from our previous previous slides previous slides where we had established the value of vn velocity at nth orbit so just look at that now vn was given as e by this so vn is equal to 1 by n put the value over here and you will have your result so now rn rn is actually given by n square upon m by h upon twice m sorry it's not h upon twice m h upon twice pi whole square by 4 pi epsilon naught this is 4 pi epsilon naught upon e square so just put the values so l equals to m v n r n equals to n h upon twice pi so use this use this put the value of v n after you get the value of v n put the value of r n and you will have your whole result so now if you just take for r equals to 1 say suppose you are taking for r equals to 1 so you are taking the radius of the hydrogen atom why because hydrogen has only one orbit so if you take r equals to 1 then you will have radius for hydrogen atom that is r equals to 1 is actually equal to 
h upon twice pi now this this gets cancelled this twice which is 2 square so h square into epsilon naught by pi m e square pi m e square so this is what you have this is what you have so now what we can say is the Bohr's radius so Bohr gave for hydrogen atom so Bohr's radius is nothing but this one which is equal to h square into epsilon naught by pi m e square this is known as your Bohr's radius now how did we get the Bohr's radius put n equals to 1 if you put n equal to 1 you will automatically get the Bohr's radius